Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I want to show you a super easy way on how to create your own custom brushes. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So these custom brushes are not just for digital painting. They can be used for composites, for retouching your pictures, for designs, for all kinds of fun ways. And of course, it is really good to have your own tools because then you can really create your own style and be more expressive. So I want to show you how to do this. And we want to create a brush like this here. For example, you can see here, I can paint on this and I have a brush that looks realistic and also has a texture of a linen canvas. By the way, if you're one of my Patreon supporters, I will give you five free brushes that I will upload tomorrow so you can see what I do and the kind of tricks that I'm applying to make these brushes more interesting. So as you can imagine, the brush is created of two different parts. One is the texture in the background that is the canvas and one is the way on how I paint onto the canvas and that is basically the tip of the brush. So for the canvas it is really important that we have a seamless texture. For that I have a page that I'm often using it's called textures.com I'm not affiliated with that but it's a very good page and you can get free textures from here and you can see that they are marked as seamless if they are. Now what seamless means is that the edges don't repeat so you don't see where the texture is ending and starting and this is really important if you want to use it as a texture for a brush because otherwise you're going to have these edges in there and it's going to break the illusion. So select one of these textures here you can see there's a lot of them these are all fabric textures but they have others too like stone or paper all kinds of things. You can see for example these are not seamless. Uh, so go for the seamless ones and another thing to look out for that's very important is look at the texture if it has very obvious repeating elements because again this can break the illusion and look not as good as it should be. Okay, so when you have decided on one, just click on that and you can see there is a free version that is a smaller resolution and then you have also premium versions if you want to have a higher resolution. But I found for brushes often the free uh, smaller size is good enough. Okay, so how are we preparing that in Affinity Photo? Go to your file and open that up. You can see here we have our texture and as you can see it's square, it is seamless when it repeats. but we need to prepare this a little bit. So what we're going to do is first of all create an adjustment for HSL and we want to set the saturation to minus 100 so this is actually black and white. Then the next thing we want to do is that we want to have an adjustment for levels and with this I will push the black over here so everything gets darker because the darker the texture is the more we will see color on that texture afterwards. So if you have a brighter color like this, if you have a brighter texture, it means that the color will also look brighter and thinner. So we don't want to have that. Let's go over here like this. And then you can also, for example, push up the white side a little bit so you have more contrast, but don't go too harsh. You can go like this if you want to, but if you keep it a little bit like this, you have more steps in between. So you fade in here, you can see you have different kind of gray values and they will show up, of course, in the texture and make it look more realistic, right? So now that you've created this, the next step is to go to file and then export and I would export this as a PNG. I have already done that so I click on cancel here and the next thing we need like I said is the tip texture. So you can go for all kinds of different things here. For example here we have nice liquid color. A good tip here, a good idea is to have pictures where the background is white or the background is already removed so you can easily remove the background because you only want to have the color. And you can also go for this here we have some watercolor or here we have some other color where we need this kind of texture that we can take out of here. Um, 
to create some beautiful tips. Now the way to do this is that you go in here and you select a part and I would select it with the elliptical mark you tool. The reason for that is because then we have a square tip that is a good starting point. So for example, we can go in here and select this part, hold the shift key so that your selection is actually around and make sure that you select everything that you want to have in here, but at the same time, have a selection where you don't have too obvious parts or parts that don't have enough structure, enough pattern, enough texture in them. So let's go, for example, with this one. I will copy this with Control and C. By the way, this is very important. When you have a file, make sure that over here in brackets it says pixel, not image. If it says image, right click rasterize so it is pixel because you cannot copy anything out of an image layer. Good. Next thing we are going to go to file and then to new from clipboard and you can see that we already have a square ground where our round selection is in. Now this is one end of our brush. Let's go back in here and select a second end. For example, this part here again, shift, pull out your circle like so move it in a direction so you have everything you want here, control C, and this time we simply go over here, control V to copy it in here, and it landed down here. Okay, perfect, good. So now here are the next steps. What you want to do is to take one of them and go to the cogwheel, use the source layer ranges and then click here once and move down that part because as you can see now this has removed all of the brighter parts and we are just left with the darker parts right we're gonna do this for the second layer again like so but now what you will see here is that because of the blend ranges this is gonna give us this bright outer edge to remove this simply go to normal and then darken as the blend mode and you can see that now the outer edge is gone now move this around until you are happy with what you have created you can also resize that you can also reshape that a little bit if you want to everything that you need to do uh, but keep in mind that it still should look realistic or should at least lead to the result that you imagine. So you can, for example, set it up like this. And you can see we have here some sharper edges. We don't want to have that. So go to your eraser brush and then in Affinity Photo, you already have some brushes like, for example, up here we have dry media. So you can select one of them for your eraser and then erase that and you can see this gives a nice uneven edge so this is perfect for our illusion of creating a brush so we're going to delete this edge here and we're going to delete this edge and you can see now it looks like these two parts are actually belonging together to each other so let's select both of them and actually rotate them a little bit i will put them into a group so Control g to put them into a group and then right click rasterize the group so now this is one layer the reason why i do this is because i want to have this right in the middle so you can see here when i move this around it snaps and then i get this red line and i get this green line and this means this is completely in the center make sure that nothing is sticking out over the center or you're going to have a cutting edge there and that is not good this is not what you want to have also again check that there are not too many elements that are too obvious and repeat themselves too much right so if you have that you can also for example duplicate the layer if you want to Control j like this and then for example i could now um, flip that and as you can see we have this bright edge here again so let's go to darken and we can, for example, now resize that and put that down here and maybe put the other one down here just so you have something where you feel like, okay, that could be a good brush. We can also go back anytime and change that, right? So now that we have created that, the next step is to go here to file and then again export and again PNG. The important about PNG is that PNG does not have a background while JPEG does have a background. By the way, Let's go back here one step. If you see this and you do not have a checkerboard, you have a white background behind your image, what you need to go is to go to document and then make a hook here next to transparent background. So if it looks like this, simply go here and then set it like this. Right now, I'm also realizing I forgot one important step and that is to go in here, adjustment, and again, HSL, 
and remove the color like this minus 100 on saturation and if you want you can also create a saturation adjustment to make it darker make it higher contrast all right let's now go to export here png like i said and then export this and you can see i already have created some tips good so now that we have exported that how do we create our brush let's delete this here and first of all, what you want to do is to create your own brush category. So up here in the brush tab, go to this icon here with the three little lines, click on that and say new category. It gives you a category with a random name. Then go in here again and say rename category like so. Good. So we have now set this up and then we go in here again to these three lines and say new intensity brush like so. Good. So this will ask us to select a tip, not a texture, a tip. That's pretty important. So this is the one we have created. So let's click on this and you can see right now it looks like this not very impressive so we have to do some more adjustments here so first of all we want to click here on more and here we have a lot of settings and more settings and here we have the texture so we can see here we have the brush nozzle as it is called the tip of our brush and then we have the texture so let's let's select the texture here first this one here and you can see now this will give us the linen texture and I can scale this here. This is really important. I will set this to 200. You set this to whatever feels right to your creation, to the tip, to the brush you want to create, right? Let's go to dynamics here. So a size dynamic based on pressure will make the brush bigger and smaller depending on how hard I press with my um, pen on the tablet or the iPad, wherever you want to use that. Then you also have accumulation where you can see this can get a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. You can set this to random. So this is a good idea to do it like that, for example. Play around with the values to see what you're getting. The next one is rotation chitter. And this is a good one because as you can see here, this makes our brush a lot more random. Another thing that I like to do, especially with these paint colors, is to set a little bit of randomness to hue, saturation, and luminosity. So let's go in here and set all three of them to 3%, like so. And now you can see if I start to paint here on my canvas, already I have an interesting brush and you can see we already also have our canvas texture in here. Let's go here for color so we can adjust this a little bit if we want to. And you can see I can already beautifully paint on my canvas and have something that actually looks like I am painting onto an actual canvas with actual liquid paint, right? Now, the brush could be more interesting. It is a little bit repetitive towards itself. So what you want to do here is to add some more of these brush tips. So let's go here to add. And I have created one of these longer tips, but you can also mix that, for example, with a round tip or with other long tips. So you can try that out. So for example, let's select this one. And you can see that now they are getting randomized. Let's go here to spacing so you can see this a little bit better. So you can see... Once in a while, we have this one with these uh, uh, spiky edges and then the other one with the round edge. Or you can go back here. Let's remove this and say we want to have a round one instead. And we have a different result. Let's go in here for spacing, make this a little bit wider. And you can see when I paint down here, this gives me a different kind of result. So you can really, really adjust this very finely in the way you want to have that. Again, play around also with the flow and with the accumulation, with all these kind of settings. Also up here, you have opacity and flow. So you can, for example, reduce the flow of your brush uh, in total. And this also gives you a different kind of effect for the brush. So this can also be very effective. Let's see, you see, this is like a more dry brush. So flow is basically how much color is in the brush. So this looks br uh, drier now. And if I put more color into the brush, this looks like a wetter brush, you see? Let's say I can do a lot of things. And of course, if you change the colors on top of that, you get a really cool effect and it really starts to look like you're painting actually on the canvas, right? So play around with that, have a lot of fun. Like I said, if you're a patron, you get five free brushes that I will upload tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching the tutorial and see you tomorrow in my live stream where we will go and talk about composition and how to make them more amazing, more consistent, and have this kind of very cool artistic wow effect in your art. See you soon. Bye.